with the crane fly or the daddy long legs. And this is just thin foam. Basically, just cut it into about 3mm wide. And then uh, I, I usually like to melt the end. Just lightly. Just very light. Once you get a bit of colour at the end, just bit moisten your fingers and then just press it. And what that does is just give it a nice brown tip. You could colour it if you want, but that seals the end. I feel it's much better. And now this is just a, a fine needle. Now, to measure the length, to give you an idea of the length, you're looking round about an inch, basically, coming out from the device. And then all I do is put the point into point of the ether foam into the point of the needle and get a tan thread. This is the uni thread and tan and needle. Come in from the back and then come round a couple of turns. Now if it does roll on you just bring it back but as long as you hold or hold the end of the waist piece and then come in and hold it with your fingers. It should it should stay once you've got another couple of turns. And then bring the, the thread underneath the foam. And then work your way up. For two or three turns. Bring it underneath as you go up. Stretch, come out slightly. Round about, I would say, a mil and a half. Now, you're looking... It's up to yourself how many segments, but basically what you think a long crane fly body is. As you see, you can do it really quick. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven segments. Then all I do is come in, put a finish at the back, just do it by hand. Now, as you can see, I've kept the waist piece and the tying thread end. I'm just going to trim these so that I can tie them in because this is basically holding the body together. Now, the main reason why I do this, I'll do that, is just it actually protects the foam. Foam will last much longer if you do that. And then all I do is turn it upside down. So we quick look and I can tighten the thread turns just by pulling them. And that's fine. And then all you have to do is slide it off. Again, tighten the threads. And as you can see there, it's all sitting knit knitted together. Now to make it last, I'm just going to use some of the bug bond. This is a light. So you run it, you don't need a lot, just a wee drop underneath. You can see. You can slightly spread it out if you want. Now the the bug bone stays flexible. So there's no worries about it cracking or splitting on you. It's fine. Just in case it runs round, just back come round to the other side. I mean, it makes the fly, it makes uh, the body last a long time. And as you can see, it stays flexible. And you need it to stay flexible so that as fish comes onto it, it doesn't really... If it's too stiff, it just doesn't work. It just doesn't look right. But that there will make it last much longer. It's much the same way as I do a, a detached body and a mayfly and so... But that's your body ready. And then we're going that's to tie simple. the fly. The hook choice is up to yourself. There's a few hooks you could pick. But the one I like the most is the B160, and the B160 is a short shank but wide gape, ideal for detached bodies. Uh, as far as that, I just feel you need the extra gape because of that. Now, this is a size 8, you could size 10 is okay as well, but a size 8 for this, the crane fly is ideal. Again, I'm back to the tan thread. Now, all I'm going to do is take the thread down until I'm in line with the point of the hook and then break away the thread. Now, basically, you could, well, I, I like to tie the legs on first, so I do. And these are the pheasant tail legs that I've got, and these are all pre-knotted. Now, uh, if you look through the packets, the vineyard packets, you'll find there'll be a, a part of a tail that's really long and ideal for daddy long legs. And then there'll be a shorter one, you may find that it's the bottom of the tail and they're much shorter, so just look for the one that suits you. Now, I'm going to take six legs and put three either side. Just 
split them so that they go down either side. One, two, three. I've got a broken leg there, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in. Take another couple. There's another broken leg. I'm going to go and get another one. Anyway, that's us now. So say I'm going to put three down either side. Just over the back. Don't be shy with the length of the leg. Let's come in. I've got two or three turns. Now I've waxed the thread so I've got plenty of grip. Now they're just basically you can leave them like that a wee bit, or it's because it's trailing legs, which the fish like to see. Or what I'm gonna do here is I'll get some squirrel dubbing and a tiny bit of flash put through it. Uh basically you could diamond bright, something like that. And the one I like is brown. And I've just mixed it through it. Now what I'm gonna do here is dub it on. I'm just going to separate the legs, just make a space, much like, just to open them out, put the dubbing in between, there you go, to get a kind of shape that you like, and which suits the daddy long legs, there we go, that's them um, better spread out. And then trim away the excess. And we need more wax. Now I'm going to tie in our body. This is the body we formed earlier. Now where we tied off is where I'm going to tie it on. Just basically come in there and catch in the waist end and the tying thread. And then trim away the excess. Just come in nice and tight. Again, make sure you wax your thread. And make sure you tie this down nice and tight. Right up against the small bit of dubbing you've got there. And there we are. Then I'm just going to, like now you would just form like a sedge hog pattern. Just a basic natural sedge hog. I'm just going to use some raw deer. Just a, this colour is nice, I like the colour of the raw. And just basically cut. Take some out and you stack it just to give you a nice uniform colour. You could leave it if you want, you just put it straight on. Now it's then stacked up and come in. Looking probably just to the back of the hook, hold that, trim away the excess, and just come in and tie these down. Nice and tight. Some more of the dubbing, a tiny bit of flash in it. Now you could put a hackle in this if you want. I'm just going to leave the hackle off. Uh, you find that sometimes you need a, a wee bit more or heavier dressing. Sometimes you like it a wee bit lighter. Depends on how windy it is. You can have both. This is the, the lighter version. So remember, take away the fluff. Now the way to stack the hair, get your stacker obviously, and you put them in tip first. Put the tips of the deer hair in. Tap it on your desk. And if you're taking it out, take it out the way you're going to tie it in, basically over the back, so you hold it there. So you don't have to swap hands. And then come in. Get the length you would like. Trim away the excess. And then just come in nice and tight. Catch this down. And there we are. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put in some wings. Now the wings I'm going to put in are just, this is a, just a, an Indian cock cape. This is like a cree if you would call it that. It's just a nice mark. You need two, two feathers. Obviously the same size, best to bring them out. Length. Tell about the length, just towards the end of the body. Just sit them on the top. Lie them down. We don't have to open out an area, just use the the fibres there to tie in. There you go, if you can look. 
Fibers help to control me and the fibers on the hackle. Gives it a wee bit of cushion, ties in very easy. At this point, make sure you wax your thread. And then come up, I want a tiny bit of dubbing again. At this point, I'm just going to come upside down, see how things are underneath. That looks okay. Then, our last part of the wing. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to show you what you can do. And this this works a treat, especially in any of the patterns that you're tying, whether it has the detached body or whatever legs. Now I'm going to take some more of the row here. I'm going to basically take a good bunch, just take it away from the, the skin, open out the fibres and remove the underfur. I'm going to stack it up. Just tap it on your desk. Nice and tight. So it's all lined up, ready to go. Then, basically I'm just going to look, get the length that I want. Come in here with two loose turns or so. And if start to pull, then allow this to run all the way around. Follow it around with the thread. And then I'm going to tighten up, by just pulling back the, the deer here. And then put some turns under the head. Nice and tight. Just come in and whip finish, keeping everything nice and neat, nice and tidy. And nice and tight. Tighten up. Take away your thread. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to get a, a curved pair of scissors, small pair. And then I'm going to form like a muddler type head. So basically what I like to do is come in and start cutting close in at the eye and working my way around obviously helps if you've got a style of vice just forming like a to have a muddler head Just keep going. Until you're happy. And I'm just going to trim underneath because I want this to be basically flat. And there we are. And then shape into the head. And that there's a kind of sedge hog, crane fly, or daddy long legs, whatever you want to call it. And spin with the detached body, it looks, uh, looks really good. Good for pulling. And that's what you want to do at times with the. Uh, the crane fly, because the disturbance, they get blown across the surface and the fish do react to them doing that when you're pulling them. Just basically put your floating onto the deer here area, especially. And this will lift the fly. Muddler head, can't go wrong with muddler head. And then just pull away. Then all you've got to do is put a wee tiny bit of varnish onto the head. And that's you finished. <laughs>